Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, joining us. I'm Bruce Gordon with the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. You're going to hear an update on this uh, case from two speakers today. Bemidji uh, Police Department uh, Chief uh, Mike Mastin, it's spelled M-A-S-T-I-N, Bemidji Police Chief Mike Mastin, and Special Agent in Charge for the Bemidji Regional Office of the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, Sue Burgraff, B-U-R-G-G-R-A-F. First of all, Chief Mastin. Well, thank you. Um, this is an opportunity to bring everyone up to speed. Um, on June 22nd, uh, at approximately 3.30 a.m., the Bemidji Police Department and Bemidji Fire Department were dispatched to a report of a house fire in the 3900 block of Irvine Avenue. Upon arrival, they discovered the house was fully engulfed in flames. After the fire department gained control of the fire, an adult body was discovered deceased inside that residence. The body has been sent to the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office for positive identification. That information will be released after proper family notification. Additionally, during that investigation, it was discovered that five-year-old Brittany Rose Balser had been visiting the residence the evening that the fire occurred. After a complete processing of the fire scene by local law enforcement and the Minnesota uh, Bureau of Criminal Operation Crime Scene Team, Brittany was not located. Numerous law enforcement agencies, including the Minnesota BCA, the Beltrami County Sheriff's Office, FBI, Bureau of Indian Affairs, the State Fire Marshal's Office, and Paul Bunyan Drug Task Force uh, joined the Bemidji Police Department in our efforts to determine what happened in the early morning hours of June 22nd at this residence and to find Brittany Balser. Yesterday, a search of the area, including a large wooded area and swampy area that surrounds this neighborhood, was conducted by more than 50 law enforcement officers and volunteers from the Bemidji Fire Department, uh, Beltrami County Posse, the Civil Air Patrol, Citizen Patrol, and Bemidji Police Reserves. This search was unsuccessful in locating Brittany Balser. Officers also canvassed the neighborhood, uh, talking with residents who may have seen anything suspicious or maybe to provide information that was valuable to this case. In the late <coughs> evening hours of June 22nd, Jacob William Kinn, age 32, was identified as a person of interest. Kinn voluntarily came to the Bemidji Police Department to speak with our detectives. After this conversation, Bemidji, or excuse me, BCA agents traveled to an area near Big Fork, Minnesota, and located Brittany Balser. Jacob William Kinn has been arrested for kidnapping and is currently incarcerated in the Beltrami County Jail awaiting formal charges. Good afternoon. BCA agents arrived on scene yesterday when it became apparent that we had a homicide. Along with other law enforcement agencies, we began to uh, search of the nearby homes and conducted many interviews. While we can't provide specific details at this time, I can tell you that through the course of the investigation, agents and uh, investigators interviewed Jacob Kinn and obtained information about his whereabouts at the time of the kidnapping. Early this morning, two BCA agents were canvassing an area north of Bemidji where they believed Mr. Kin had been. They discovered fresh tire tracks. They followed the tire tracks through a wooded area where they located a pop-up camper. Inside, they found Brittany. She has been taken to a medical facility for examination and treatment. At this point in the investigation, it appears as though the property where she was found is owned by a relative. and that's a relative of the suspect. How is Brittany doing today? Can we just hold on one second, uh, Chief, go right ahead. Um, this continues to be a complex and ongoing investigation. Uh, we're now we have shifted gears and we are looking at learning everything we can about this timeline, the motive, and whether anyone else was involved. Uh, it doesn't appear to be, it does not appear to be in this case, but we still want to be 
uh, po positive and explore that possibility. Um, I wish to thank all the public uh, agencies that assisted and the public itself uh, for continuing to assist us in this ongoing investigation. Thank you. So, questions? Go ahead. Uh, uh, how is Brittany doing today? Well, she's uh, safe and alive. You said that the BCA lab when it became apparent that it was a homicide. Um, was the fire set intentionally? Is that what you mean by homicide? And that is still under investigation. We'll have further details on that as the investigation um, goes on. And we'll be working a lot with the fire marshal's office on that as well. So it was a homicide, but you don't know if the fire was set intentionally? It appears through the investigation that it was a homicide. Mike? The suspect has a conviction for child pornography. Was there anything of that nature involved in the, in the motive with uh, Brittany? The investigation at this point really is, I mean, it's very early in the investigation, so we're still working on numerous leads and tracking down um, information. Yeah, have you figured out if Mr. Kim is connected to the homicide at all, or, or is that something you're exploring as well? Well, we, we continue to explore that. I, I understand you have a lot of questions, and a lot of these questions uh, will become probably more uh, um, public once this formal complaint has been drafted. Now, that'll take some time because, it, like we said, there is a lot of investigation that continues to occur and needs to occur before we can establish uh, uh, all, all the facts of this case. Did he know the homicide victim? The suspect, did he know the, the lady that burned in the fire? Uh, we believe so. Did he know Brittany? That we don't know at this point. So. Any other questions? So, Mr. Kim knew the homicide victim, but you're not sure if he's connected to the homicide? Well, we do not have positive identification on this victim. What we believe is that he knew this victim. What time was Brittany located by the BCA this morning in the pop-up camera? Approximately. Uh, approximately 520 this morning. Has she been reunited with her family yet? Um, I believe that she has been reunited with her family. As you can imagine, like I said earlier, we got um, medical treatment and advocacy and um, interviews, et cetera, but yes. We're, we're in the process. She's still, like she said, uh, receiving medical attention, and uh, we, we need to interview her to find out details that are relevant to the case. So I don't know specifically that they've been reunited at this have, point. Have the parents been cleared of anything to do with what happened? The investigation continues. It's still too early to know. Chief, you found Brittany at 520 a.m. Can you talk about the good police work it took to locate her? It looks like the guys and gals who found her hadn't had much sleep. Well, um, speaking for myself, I was here 22 hours yesterday. Um, I was reluctant, as most of us that went home at 4 this morning, we were reluctant to leave um, because uh, you become emotionally attached to this and you become involved and nobody wants to leave but looking at what lies ahead standing here today we all need some sleep at times and it's nice to know that we have the resources I mean you can look at the back of the room and there's numerous agencies that are involved in this that pitched in to help and I, I mentioned them in my police report and that is the reason we had this uh, quick resolution how much of a relief is it that she was found alive it just seems like so many of these types of cases end badly well, clearly it's a fantastic result. We couldn't ask for a better result. Get her back alive. Is it rare? I mean, you, is, is, is it rare to have a kidnapping of this nature and then find a person alive like that? Well, I don't think statistically speaking I can give an accurate answer. Uh, for my 16-year career in law enforcement, this is our first, thankfully, and I'm glad we had a positive outcome. Regarding the homicide, can you speak as to uh, if the person died in the fire or was perhaps killed beforehand? Well, I can't speak to the homicide until I know it's a homicide, and that won't occur until the Ramsey County uh, Medical Examiner's Office issues their report. Does it sound like Brittany was present when the fire was set? Um, I, I, I can't answer that right Still now. Still working on the timeline of events. That's part yep. of the question. Can you give us a timeline? Secure. I know you will get that criminal complaint when charges could possibly file. Can you give us a timeline on when all this could happen? Uh... <laughs> You know, I, I guess I can't give you a, an exact timeline. Can you say why you believe it was a homicide? At, 
this point, we'd rather not give details on that, um, just uh, because we're continuing with many interviews yet. People have not been interviewed. We prefer not to give details out about what we've learned um, prior to those folks being interviewed. And how did Brittany know the woman she was staying with at that uh, trailer home? It's a family friend. Has, have a number of uh, search warrants been executed already? Is there more to come? Yes, yes. Did you say, did you go to the pop-up tent based on statements from the suspect or, or just investigating connections with him? We went there because of uh, investigative leads. Um, actually, it came out of cell tracking. And um, we utilized that technology uh, to help us save her. Did he give statements uh, that would amount to a confession of any sorts? Um, we yeah. can't provide those details at this time. One more question, both. My, like the Dan one case, though, Ken came in and talked to you voluntarily? Correct. He came in on his own. After so, being contacted, or how did that, he didn't just come in without being reached first, right? We, con we made contact with him, and he came in okay. voluntarily. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.